Back at it again with the blast to the past. I wanted to give a big belated happy birthday out there because today we're talking about a guy whose birthday was literally, what, three days ago? I'm recording this audio on December 23rd, 2023. It's actually the guy's birthday right now. But of course, because this is a pre-recorded thing, holiday season, I'm going on a trip, don't want to overwork myself whilst on a holiday vacation, I'm pre-recording this video to talk about a player that was a lot bigger of a deal earlier this year than he is right now. You may remember a lot of the stuff that went on with this guy about a year ago, and you may have even remembered the trade that we had seen earlier this year when he got sent over to the Vancouver Canucks. But now it's been, what, 10 months since then? And I think... For all intents and purposes, it would be very fair to say that this big trade between the Vancouver Canucks and the New York Rangers was kind of a lose-lose. So, today we're talking about the belated happy birthday boy Vitaly Kravtsov, and going over just what exactly he's been up to, as well as checking in on all the other assets involved in the trade. Vitaly Kravtsov currently belongs to the Vancouver Canucks. He's unsigned by the team. He was initially acquired by Vancouver earlier this year in February, when he was a New York Ranger with six points in 28 games played. He was sent over to the Vancouver Canucks and proceeded to put up two points in 16 games, one goal, one assist. I'll be honest, the guy was not good in Vancouver. Sure, there were some stints, some shifts, some board battles that we were impressed by, but holistically, this guy was not an NHL caliber player, especially for the type of game that Rick Tockett wants. We are already seeing just how Andre Kuzmenko has been treated based off of the way he plays the game. Vitaly Kravtsov was honestly kind of worse. Like, a lot of the same tendencies that Kuzmenko had Kravtsov displays as well, just to a lesser magnitude, and as a result, you can understand why he wasn't really that good of a player here. Now, Vitaly Kravtsov is in the KHL with Traktor Chelyabinsk as a 22-point in 31-game guy. He's on pace for a 40-point year, which is admittedly going to be a career high for this player in the KHL. It's just, you know... KHL hockey is KHL hockey. Guys who do really well in that league are not guaranteed to be doing as amazingly in the NHL, and that's very true for a lot of the guys who have been in the KHL this season. I mean, just some of the top players in that league, Nikolai Goldolbin, consistently you've got guys like Lyndon Vey, Marcus Granlund, not Mikhail Granlund, Marcus Granlund, just guys bouncing around all over the place in Europe. The scene over there is a lot different. So for Vitaly Kravtsov, while this is a guy that was a Vancouver Canuck via his rights, he's definitely not a player that I think many Canucks fans are thinking is going to be vying or fighting for a spot any time in the next few years. If he does stay in Vancouver and he eventually signs and he becomes good, then okay, great, but I don't know if that's really in the wheelhouse right now. The reason we're talking about Kravtsov, though, other than the fact that I'm recording this video on his birthday, is because of a post made on the R Ranger sub by Brian Ramirez. And I am dragging out the Zeds because, yeah, it's Ramirez. Lockwood and a seventh for Vitaly Kravtsov. I'm unsure if this flew under the radar, nor did I want to resurface this horrid and forced trade, but did we know that Will Lockwood was a UFA at the end of the 2023 season, and he walked? Ultimately, assuming that we knew this, Vitaly Kravtsov was a busted ninth overall pick who was worth a 7th rounder in 2026. This Reddit post is coming from the angle of rage. It's upset that a guy taken by the Rangers in a top spot in the 2018 draft, ninth overall, as we're reminded by, was inevitably, sometime down the line, traded for essentially a seventh round pick. Because the guy that the Rangers got in return, Will Lockwood, admittedly was a pretty okay player. I mean, even when he was in Vancouver, he had 13 games played, only one assist, but I'll remember Lockwood as being one of these guys that just was a pretty strong pest to play against. He didn't want Lockwood to go out there and score a bunch of goals, because you realistically knew that wasn't going to happen. Instead, Lockwood would disturb the opposition with his forecheck and his hustle, think Tyler Mott, but kind of worse, and there was a good enough profile to say, hey, if this guy is just rotting away in the AHL, that's probably not the best for him, so why not send him to a team that can actually use him and put him in a spot where he can showcase his chops at the top level? And that's not what he did with the Rangers. They did not play him in the NHL. They played him in the AHL only for the Hartford Wolfpack. He had 12 points in 17 games played, which was great, 
But then he became a free agent and he walked, signing a contract with the Florida Panthers. Two years long, $775,000 for this 25-year-old right-handed right winger. And Lockwood now is in the, what, the NHL. Yeah, he's actually with the main team. Good for him. He's got 11 games played, zero points, but he's at half a point a game in the AHL in the time he has spent with the Charlotte Checkers. Now, for Lockwood, he doesn't really matter to many Rangers or Canucks fans anymore because he's just another guy that was a part of your systems. But knowing what I know about Will Lockwood and thinking about the system that the Florida Panthers play, I'm not surprised that he's over there. I'm not surprised that he's sticking around with that team. I'm not surprised that he seems to be getting ice time. I mean, if we look it all up here, Will Lockwood, in the past few games worth of play for the Florida Panthers, has actually gotten some minutes. Now, he has been in and out of the lineup. He started the year out with Florida, got sent down, and recently he's been back playing about... You see, it's tough to do the math here because he had 11 minutes against Edmonton, 5 minutes against Calgary the next game, and then 12 minutes against St. Louis the next. So he's kind of bouncing around all over the place, getting some hits and some blocks, so he's just kind of there... But at the end of the day, this is the main player that the Rangers got in return for Vitaly Kravtsov. It was this guy and a seventh round pick that you're not going to be able to use until 2026. So really, I mean, you could understand this trade from both sides in hindsight. The Rangers are getting some stuff. They're getting a guy in Lockwood that they could have used, but they didn't. And they got the draft pick that is worth something. It's not worth a lot, but it's worth something. Meanwhile, the Vancouver Canucks get an opportunity to work with a guy that the Rangers just completely gave up on, and for pretty good reason, considering he wasn't all too great. And the Canucks gave him an opportunity to showcase himself off that he's actually a lot better, and he's worth more playing time, more opportunity, etc. He didn't show that off in the slightest, but the Canucks gave him the chance to do so. Let's head back over onto the Rangers sub and read some comments made by Rangers fans about the Kraftsov situation. Wow, a Kraftsov post. This brings me back to the great civil war of our Rangers. pro Kraftsov versus anti Kraftsov. This is a guy who had NHL talent and KHL makeup. Oh well, he was the right pick at the time. I actually agree with this 100%, well said. And you know what I like about that a lot? Is that this comment doesn't go out there and directly blame the Rangers for saying, hey, y'all took Kraftsov ninth overall, but the very next pick was an NHL player in Evan Bouchard. The pick after, Oliver Wallstrom. The pick after, Noah Dobson. Like, there are NHL players that were taken after Kraftsov that are all great. But for Kraftsov, you gotta remember, back in 2017-18, the reason he was even taken this high was because in that year's KHL playoffs, he went off. He had 11 points in 16 games played. He was such a talented player, scoring goals and just making a huge impact as a 17-18 year old in the KHL that... The hype for this guy heading into the draft just had so much momentum behind it. It's why he got pushed up the rankings late into the year, and it's why the Rangers said, hey, we want a big playoff performer, a Russian sniper that can do some really good things. He was playing in the playoffs this year in the KHL. What's not to like? And eventually, I mean, he didn't really do all too well in the KHL afterwards. He had a few years where his production was slightly getting higher, and he was bouncing up and down in the NHL, the AHL too. Eventually, now in the KHL, he's on pace for a career year, which is good for him. But back in this time frame when he was draft eligible, there was a reason why he went this high in the draft. It wasn't seen too badly when the pick was made. Obviously, there were some people saying, oh yeah, they deviated from the consensus because they took a guy that was hot in the playoffs last year. It's kind of like the momentum that Slavkovsky built for himself at the Olympics in 2022. Had he not had that tournament, he might not have even been drafted anywhere in the top three. So momentum and short-term memory really play a part in these draft rankings. And when you have teenagers that are able to do really well against men you'll normally find that their draft stock rises as a result. And that's why Kravtsov was taken ninth overall. I won't say it was the right pick by any means, but I do understand why it was made back from that time frame. Nowadays, it's easy to say, oh yeah, well, look at these numbers. Look at the guy's attitude. He shouldn't have even been a first round guy. Even with the trade included, hey, he was traded for Will Lockwood, who is a third rounder and a seventh round pick in three years. Like, that's not really the bee's knees there when you think about it from the Rangers POV. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below how the Canucks are not getting anything out of Kravtsov, how the Rangers got nothing out of Lockwood, and now all they have to show for this trade is a 7th round pick, and how this trade ultimately was a pretty big lose-lose for all parties involved. Thoughts in the comment section below between Canucks and Rangers fans, what are your thoughts on Lockwood? Kraftsov. Do you think Kraftsov has a future in the NHL? I'm personally on the more pessimistic side, which is very rare for me to say because I'm usually on the opposite side. But thoughts in the comment section either way. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And...
Bye.